everyone, welcome to today's lecture. The last lecture we looked at the definition of marriage and the types of marriages in Africa. Today we are going to continue with that topic, but our focus is going to be on marriage payments and exchange. Marriage payments and exchange. The contraction of marriage in Africa involves series of ceremonies and exchanges. It is a practice that something is given out and then something is received. Most of the times, the exchange may be direct or indirect. In a situation of direct exchange, it is where a family member is presented in exchange for another family member. So for instance, Mr. Amwaku wants to get married to Efia. When he approaches Efia's family and they agree to the marriage, Mr. Amwaku goes along with his sister or her cousin or any member of his family. After the marriage is contracted and a fear is given into marriage to Mr. Amwaku, Mr. Amwaku also gives in her sister to a fear's family. So during the marriage ceremony, when a fear is given out in marriage to Mr. A, Mr. A also gives out his sister to a fear's family as a replacement for taking a fear as his wife. So it's like in, in ordinary terms, what we call swapping. You take a wife from one family, you bring another woman, to fill in the space that the woman you are taking as your wife has created. There is also indirect exchange. Indirect exchange is, is in the form of the payment of prestation. When we say prestation, it basically refers to what is the collective name for all the gifts that are presented during the contraction of marriage. Prestation is usually in three forms. It includes the bride wealth, the dowry, and then the bride service. Now let's look at these uh, terminologies. What is bride wealth? Bride wealth refers to the series of gifts that the man presents to the woman's family in the course of contracting the marriage. So in our Ghanaian society, let's say the list you go for from the woman's family, all the items that you buy, the money you give to her parents, the accountancy kind, the money you give to her brother-in-law, all of that comes together to be called or referred to as bride wealth. So all the gifts that a man presents to the woman's family in the course of contraction marriage is what is referred to as bride wealth. The next one is dowry. Dowry on the other hand refers to the gifts that the woman's family presents to the man's family in the course of contracting the marriage in appreciation for the man choosing their daughter as his wife. The next one is bride service. Bride service refers to all the services that a man presents or performs for his wife's family prior to the marriage contraction, even after the marriage contraction. So after the marriage, visiting them, helping them with their finances. In contemporary societies, you find in-laws, finding jobs, finding admission and all that. All of these things come together to be referred to as bride service. What are some of the features of marriage payments? The first is that when you look at bride wealth and then dowry, they are similar, but there is just some few differences. Both bride wealth and dowry connotes a means of transmission where something is given out and then something is received. So in bride wealth, the, the gift is presented by the man and then in return, he gets the hands of a woman in marriage. So both of them connote a system of transmission where something is given out and then another is received. The difference is that the bride wealth is presented by the man to the woman's family, while the dowry is presented by the woman to the man's family. In many societies, the bride wealth can be paid outright. So during the marriage ceremony, you pay the bride wealth and you are done with it. In some societies, you pay in installment. So let's say during the marriage contraction, you give out five cattle. In the next two years, you present another two cattle. In the next two years, you present another two cattle. So in some instances, it is paid in installment, whilst in some cases, it is paid outright. The idea of bride wealth, traditionally or some years ago, it was referred to as bride price. Now, the name bride price connoted a system of sellout. 
bride price had the implication that the woman was being was being sold out to the man who was um, asking for her hand in marriage. So sometimes men, some men felt they had total control over the woman because they had paid the bride price. So the name bride price was changed to bride worth. Even that, some scholars have argued that the name bride worth connotes a system of the woman's family being wealthy after the bride price or after the gifts have been presented. But scholars have argued that when you come to Africa, the name bride, the term bride wealth or bride price, it does not connote quantification or a sellout of the woman who is being given out in marriage. Rather, it is a system that that's, uh, has its own benefit towards the marriage uh, arrangement. Okay, so let's look at some importance of bride wealth. We have earlier indicated that it does not give out the idea that the woman is being sold at. Rather, it plays a very important role in the contraction of the marriage. So the first to begin is that the one importance of bride wealth is that it serves as a bond for assurance that the husband and the wife and their respective lineages will uphold each other's rights by performing respective conjugal obligations. So we can say that bride wealth legitimizes the union between the man and the woman. It also determines the ownership of children. When a man pays the bride wealth of a woman, Socially and legally, he is given the social rights over the woman. So any children born by that woman is traditionally owned by the man. So it gives the man ownership or the right to claim the children that are born by the woman. Next, bride wealth also elevates the social status of men. When a man is able to pay the bride price of a woman, he is well respected in society and his social status is elevated. In situations where the man marries more women, it connotes that he is wealthy and he is a responsible person, thereby elevating his social status and economic power. Again, bride wealth also confers on a man his sexual rights over a woman. In traditional societies, until you marry a woman, you do not have any rights to her sexuality. The belief is that whilst a woman remains unmarried, her father keeps in his possession the sexual rights over her. It is after the bride price has been paid that the man releases this rights over to the man who has paid the bride price. That is why in traditional societies like the Akans, if any man ends up having any illicit relationship with a married woman, the man has the right to seal him and to seek for compensation for having any illicit relationship with the man. This term is usually referred to as Ayrefe, which literally means the stealing of a wife. It also gives a man his genetrical rights. Genetrical rights refers to the rights a man has to claim the offspring of a woman as his offspring. Again, it confers on a man his Ozora rights. Ozora rights refers to the rights that a man has to demand or to expect the performance of certain domestic chores or services from his wife. This implies that until you marry a woman, you cannot demand for the, the performance of certain domestic services like cooking and cleaning and washing and all that. But once a woman pays the bride price, he has the right to make those demands over the woman. Okay, so this brings us to the end of today's lecture. There we have looked at uh, marriage payments and exchange. We have seen that the marriage payments can be direct or indirect. We have said that prestation refers to the collective name for all the gifts that are presented during the course of a marriage contraction it comes in three forms the dowry the bride price and the bride wealth and then we moved on to look at the importance of bride wealth in africa thank you very much